Hi everyone. Um, like I said in the previous video, I'm going to go ahead and start swapping out the Predator 212cc overhead valve motor with the old Snow King 5 horsepower Tecumseh that I actually had on a different snowblower. If you look at my uh, previous video, I did an engine swap with this old one. Well, now that this one is completely crapped out on me, um, gonna go for the for the brand new. Um, and in typical mid-Atlantic United States fashion, yesterday, in the back of my truck. Nah. Hi everyone. Uh, for all of you that might have watched my previous video uh, with the unboxing of the 212 Predator engine. I'm now going to go ahead and swap it on to my 21 inch Troy built um, American Legend snowblower. Uh, for those of you who watched a previous video of a few years ago, I swapped a Tecumseh Snow King 5 horsepower onto this one. And uh, like I said, I only have one drive belt, which is going to be the same for the Predator engine. So I'm probably going to have the same issue with the forward and reverse speeds um, that I had in the previous video. I've heard of, I think somebody gave me a comment on how to fix that, but I'm just too lazy to figure all that out. So in true mid-Atlantic United States fashion, yesterday, I'll show you in the back of my truck, I went and just cleaned up all of the leaves and here we are today it's snowing um, as you can see on let's see if I can get that Japanese maple there across the street I mean there's some trees that still have leaves on them here and it's uh, December 9th yesterday was my birthday so um, yeah there's there's some leaves that don't come down until almost Christmas time um, and here we are, we're supposed to pick up one to three, some, some places are saying three to five, but we'll see. Um, but we're going to try and swap out this engine today. All right, I've got the old engine off. For those of you doing this at home, these are just half inch nuts that you gotta just pop right off of there. Piece of cake. Um, and then uh, I just kind of pulled the belts right off the front. Uh, this one's got a nice spring to it. This one, it has a little bit of give, um, but that one was on the front belt there, so that one pulled off real easy. Now I think the hard part is going to be trying to get that off. I don't have any fancy tools. If I figure out an easy way to do that, I'll be sure to let you know. Um, and then we're going to get the engine out of here. And I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that that's going to pop on there real easy. That'll be the next thing I do. Quick update. The engine's off. And in order to start getting these pulleys off, this bolt here was a 9 16 inch. And then on the back, that's a half inch nut inside of there. And I don't know if they designed these for this particular reason, but I think it, it would it would have been easier to try and get this off if I would have just left it on the uh, bolts on the snowblower, but um, I didn't do that this time. So I had the socket wrench on there, and this little, I think it's the oil drip, uh, works out perfect because it holds your socket as you're trying to unscrew um, that bolt out there. And then what I used was just a half inch impact wrench from Harbor Freight. Um, this thing has come in handy more times than you can imagine. Whether it be just a, a stuck bolt that I couldn't get off or changing the, rotating the tires. Um, that thing has been uh, a lifesaver with trying to get off stuck bolts. But um, anyways, that's how I got that. That front bolt off and we'll try and get these pulleys next. Okay guys, I'm not sure um, <laughs> if this is good or not, but the way that I got these 
pull these off and I hope they're two separate pieces. It looks like they are. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but this one goes all the way to the back of the shaft and then there's a spacer and then you stick the other one on. And then the other one has the bolt obviously at the, at the end of it. So I think it's okay that these are split in half that the way that they are. Uh, but the way that I got this off, I don't have one of those nifty things that you stick on there and then you just screw it in and it just pulls the whole contraption off. So I know hopefully you'll be able to see this. But what I did is I just put my feet on each side of the engine there and then I got one of these pipe wrenches and I stuck that on the back of it and I just lightly tapped. And for the second one, I was able to just stick it right down there at the bottom and then just tap all the way around the back. I pull on it, it just popped right off. Uh, so, it looks like we already have the keys inside oops, inside the pulleys right there. So, I'm curious. Uh, we're going to find out. I believe that they're different size shafts. Uh, we're going to check that here in a sec. But I did order a shaft that I think is the right size. So, um, that will be the next step to see if I can't get these pulleys on on the new engine. Okay, uh, for your mechanically savvy engine people out here, I'm sorry, but I already took the key out. Um, so my issue is these pulleys for the Tecumseh, they have welded keys or keys that don't come out. You can see that right there. They will not come out. They are, I guess, pressed into the pulley itself. So what happens is when I try and slide this pulley on, the key is too short to go all the way down and catch both the adapter sleeve and the actual engine key on the shaft. You see what I'm talking about here? So the other issue I have and this is for you people who hopefully can follow along, is that the key for both the adapter as well as the key to the engine are too large. They stick up through both the adapter and the shaft, and I can't have that either because, you know, like I said, this piece is, you know, pressed in there already so my plan is the pulleys have a space in between the two pulleys to give it a little bit of room here so my thought process is I'm gonna make the key first I'm going to cut off just the top of it just a little bit right off the top I've already got it measured this is why I said hopefully you can follow along I've already got it measured with just the amount that I want to cut off and then I'm going to have it about this wide so it'll fit just under um, this spacer here and that should hold both the engine uh, key slot and the adapter key slot together. <laughs> Meanwhile I'll be able to then slide on the two pulleys into the adapter slot and hopefully that should work. Um, and as always, if you've seen my other video, I absolutely love the Dremel. So I'm hoping with the carbide tip, this will be able to just slice off that little bit that I need. Um, and we should be good. I have two keys and I have another one that I just bought for another motor. Um, that's like a big long stock. So if I screw this up, I have more options. We'll see what happens. To give you guys a feel of what I'm doing here, as you can see, I've cut just about half. Hold on, see if I can get it focused. There we go. I've cut about half of the key so far. And what I'm doing is actually working out really well. I put a nice little line on the end there. Put the top of the vise right on that line. And then I'm just going back and forth with the Dremel and working my way all the way down the key. I think I'm going to stop right there though. Um, 
just because, like I said, I only need a distance of about that much. So if I screw this up the first time, at least I'll have another half of the key to use if, if I have to try it again. All right, I've got the little piece that I'm gonna stick underneath that spacer, all cut, shaped up nice. It should match up pretty nice. I'm, I'm hoping I'm gonna have to kind of pound it on there a little bit that way. Um, it'll be nice and firm. Now, I saw on a couple other YouTube videos that there used there was like a spacer on the back of this engine here um, that would match up kind of just like the old engine. Um, however, that is not the case right now. So what I did was I'm just going to stick a little key and I cut another piece of the key. I'm going to stick it right on the back and then I'm going to go ahead and put on my first pulley and then that should go all the way there to the back and then that'll line up if you see down it that'll line up with um, the bottom pulley and then you'll have the spacer and then you'll have the next pulley uh, I put a little bit of grease in there there was grease on the old one um, so maybe that'll help it slide on and off if I ever have to take this thing off again um, and maybe it'll just help slide them one uh, right now. So here we go. We're going to try and put this thing back together. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the engine is completely on the snow blower. You see, I, I got it tightened down. Well, it's nice and snug. Um, I have the pulleys on there exactly the way that they were before. You'll see if I put down the auger. There you go, the spring action, it'll tighten it right up. And then if I put down the drive belt, same thing. That's on the other side there, but it'll tighten it right up. That one's already pretty tight. Um, so once it goes in gear, it's pretty much going to be rolling. Um, let's see. Oh, the one issue I was having, and I'm still going to have the chute, and I've seen this on a few YouTube videos as well, the... The chute maneuverability is a little difficult. So this piece here used to be straight down. Um, and with it being straight down, it ran straight into the side of like where the carburetor and the overhead valve is. So I tried to just bend it outward to get it around that. Unfortunately, if you can see that, it still hits. Um, it will spin, uh, it's very challenging but it will spin. Um, in the future, I'm just gonna get this thing going for now. I'm gonna take this back off, um, and that way it doesn't get too hot on this right here. And we're gonna try and figure out something to do with the chute control. Um, but you guys are gonna be the first to see it. I have not started this thing up yet, uh, so wish me luck on getting this thing going. Be right back. All right, we're going to go ahead and get this thing started up. I just wanted to point out a couple things which I like compared to the old engines. Um, you've got the throttle control, you've got the turtle rabbit, and then you also have the choke control on top. And then this is cool because my older engines didn't have this. Um, is the gas on and off switch which is great because obviously a snow blower in the mid-atlantic region you're only going to be using it you know for maybe three months out of the year we're in december here we'll get you know probably our last snows are usually in march um, so to be able to turn the gas off is great so the other thing you have to remember to do is turn the unit on and we are good to go uh, let's refocus this and we'll give it a couple pulls, see what happens. Choke is on. Gas is on. We're going to put it mid-throttle. So that is turtle. That's about middle right there. Got it on, we'll give it a couple pulls.
start that up first try on two pulls is pretty good. It runs real quiet too. Take the choke off a little bit more. Now we've got the choke completely off. Uh, this unit is supposed to have a break-in period of three hours. So we're gonna let this thing run for about an hour and a half, turn it off for a half hour or so, and then we'll start it back up again for another hour and a half. All right, thanks for watching.